In this last example, it's really interesting because I, we call it the birthday problem, but essentially what we would want to know is the probability of at least someone in the same room as you having the same birthday. And so, you know, I always love this because um, I love it. There's like twins in my class because twins are, um, you know, two people that share the same birthday and we could do the probability of that with how many students in the room and so um, and compare. So this one is just 10 people. So let's just say you go into a party with 10 people. What is the probability that there is at least one birthday that's same as yours, right? Is a shared birthday. Well, um, the probability of at least one, so that, that's going to be that formula. <clears throat> Right, which is equal to one minus the probability of none. So if there are no shared birthdays, right? So the probability of none means the probability of no shared birthdays, which is good because that's what we want. We want without replacement, right? So if one person has a birthday, the other person in the room would not have that same birthday. So if there are no birthdays, so now let's go ahead. So if there are no shared birthdays, that is without replacement, right? So without replacement, because no one's going to share, right? No one's going to share the same birthday or have two birthdays. And, um, and then also, um, and does order matter? Well, order does matter <laughs> the way you were born, right? So the years matter and what year. I wish I was born in 2021, you know, but I'm not an infant. And so therefore, um, it's without uh, where order matters with birthdays. And so that should be all the red flag to say, okay, we're going to be using and you know, right, permutations for our probability. Okay. So if it's without, if no shared birthdays means without replacement and order matters, then let's do a permutation. So how many choices do we have for birthdays? Well, how many days in the year? 365 choices, right? Days in the year. And how many categories? Well, I only want to have how many people share um, in the room that would share the birthday, right? 10, right? So only 10 people in the room, so 10 categories. So I only care about 10 people having a birthday and the ones that are not shared. Okay, so the other piece now is just how many ways, let's say, let's just not even talk about birthdays. Let's just say, now let's just talk about birthdays in general. Right? Um, how many... Um, if everybody was born, everyone had an option to not to have with replacement, let's say everyone has the option to be born on that same day and have a shared birthday. And so if we have the option for shared birthdays, that means that all 10 of these people at the party could all be born on the same day if they wanted, right? So how many choices do we have? Well, we have 365 choices of birthdays. And then how many people can be born on that day that choosing? Well, again, this should remind you of with repetition, right? Whether or not order matters. So just like the letters with repetition and then the numbers with rep the digits with repetition, remember all the possible choices. Well, we could have all 10 people born on that same day. right? So it's 365 to the 10th power, right? So the number of ways to have 10 birthdays, because we don't really know what people's birthdays are. And like, we wouldn't, we wouldn't cherry pick them for the party to make sure they're all different, right? We just say, Oh, come over to my party, all 10 people show up. And it's possible that all 10 people can share a birthday, right? So um, the number of possibilities would be, again, 
the 365 and then 10 categories, right? So 365 for the first person, 365 for the second. But with no shared birthdays up here in the blue, it does matter. Like that first person has 365 days to choose their birthday and then nobody else, all of their nine people cannot have that birthday. And so that's why it's permutation. Okay, so we're just about ready. All right, so the probability that at least one shared birthday is equal to one minus the probability that none of the 10 are shared. Okay, so this is just one minus the probability that none are shared. So then how many, the, how many ways can none of the birthdays be shared? Well, I have 365, pick 10. All over, how many ways can 10 people have birthdays? Right now, let's just say the probability that none are shared is the probability that none are, you know, without replacement out of how many people can have birthdays, right? So the number of ways people just can have birthdays was the 365 out of 10. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this in the calculator. I'm not going to do all this work by myself. I'll put a parenthesis around the numerator. So let's do 365, choose or pick 10. So without replacement, no one shares a birthday. And then divide that by how many ways we can just have a 10 birthdays. All right, so we have um, 0.1169 or 11.69%. So this means uh, there's an 11.69% ch chance that if you go to a party with 10 people that you'll have at least one shared birthday. Okay, so um, let's just say in general, the probability that there is at least one shared birthday out of n people is one minus 365 pick n all over 365 to the n. And so um, in, in general, that's what uh, that is the probability in which um, you could go into a room and have shared birthdays. So if you have a pair of twins in your class, you can take the number of people in your classroom and go ahead and find that probability that's expected and then go ahead and find the actual probability of taking the twins too out of those numbers and see if these match, these numbers match. Okay.